And finally, we describe how MIT researchers, with the help of funding from the U.S. Army Research Laboratory, are putting a tiny gas turbine engine inside a silicon chip about the size of a quarter. The resulting device could run ten times longer than a battery of the same weight can, powering laptops, cell phones, radios, and other electronic devices. It could also dramatically lighten the load for people who can't connect to a power grid, including soldiers who now must carry many pounds of batteries for a three-day mission. The researchers say that in the long term, mass production could bring the per-unit cost of power from micro-engines close to that of power from today's large gas turbine power plants. This field, called Microelectromechanical Systems, or MEMS, grew out of the computer industry's stunning success in developing and using microtechnologies. The microengine project started here at MIT in 1995, so we've been going on for about a dozen years now. Uh, and the basic idea, the question was, can we make a, a power source, or really a power converter, uh, at a very small size using a technology that's called uh, MEMS, or Microelectromechanical Systems? Um, Basically, in, in this technology, we use the same sort of fabrication techniques that you would use for integrated circuits for making computer chips. But the question is, can we use those fabrication processes where you make things very small and use them to generate uh, mechanical parts? I'm a mechanical engineer. I like to make or, or, or work with valves and compressors and turbines. We're actually situated in the gas turbine lab here at MIT. Um, so the question was, could we actually make a gas turbine out of it? Um, now, the first question is, well, why would you want to make a gas turbine uh, using the, the, these small silicon techniques? Um, and there are a couple reasons. Um, the first that, that, that we thought about when we first started working on this was, well, what, what happens when you scale an engine down in size? Uh, when you scale an engine down in size, several things change. Um, some things get better, some things get worse in terms of the operation of the engine. Um, but when you scale down in size, uh, part of what, what's always of interest to us is the power of the engine. And the power of the engine sort of scales with the mass flow that you're pushing through the engine. How can one make a tiny fuel-burning engine? An engine needs a compressor, a combustion chamber, a spinning turbine, and so on. Making millimeter-scale versions of those components from welded and riveted pieces of metal isn't feasible. So, like computer chip makers, the MIT researchers turn to etched silicon wafers. As we make these, these, this engine smaller and smaller and smaller, the power density should scale up linearly, all else being the same. Now, all else is not the same. Um, as I mentioned, several things get a little bit worse when you get down in size. Um, the flow seems to be a little bit more viscous inside the turbo machinery, so the losses in, in the turbo machinery will be a little bit worse. Uh, we're also confronted with uh, just the problem of how do you actually make the engine, I and mean, we have these techniques, uh, and I'll talk about those in a little bit, um, but, but we, we don't have the, the full reign and degrees of freedom that you would have when you're working on a large-scale milling machine and lathe and whatever uh, when we make our, our large-scale airplane engine. So I, when I say gas turbine engine, I'm talking essentially the same engine uh, that, that's hanging on a wing on an airplane that when, when you fly. The micro engine is made up of six silicon wafers piled up like pancakes and bonded together. Each wafer is a single crystal with its atoms perfectly aligned, so it is extremely strong. To achieve the necessary components, the wafers are individually prepared using an advanced etching process to eat away selected material. When the wafers are piled up, the surfaces and the spaces in between produce the needed features and functions. Right, well, I've mentioned how we, we're trying to use the techniques that the same sort of fabrication techniques you use for making computer chips for making our little engine, our mechanical engine. Uh, and the question is, well, how do you go about and do that? Uh, what we do is we, we take our, our silicon wafers um, and you use a, a technique called photolithography. We have a, and I'll show you a, a picture here, this is a glass mask uh, in which we, we get printed on it and it's, it's metallic chrome, a coating that's put on the mask that has the shapes that we'd like to place onto our wafer. Um, and then we, we, we do a photographic technique on our wafers. Um, we put a, a material that's called photoresist, which is a photosensitive material, and we'll just illuminate through that, that mask onto our, our photosensitive material on the wafer, uh, and then develop it. And when we develop it, we'll have regions on our, our wafer um, which are coated with, with this material, a polymer material, and regions which are not coated. And then we can then place this inside our, our, our 
etching machine, a, a machine which will then eat away at the silicon in, in regions that are exposed. What I'm showing here is a wafer, and you can see the wafer in, in the center here, which has the photoresist on it um, with, with open regions where we would then be etching down. And this is a picture of a, uh, of a, a uh, sorry, this is a, a compressor, a wafer of compressors. And, and here you can see there are just five uh, devices in the center with a variety of more rotors around the outside so we can pick and choose uh, what will be the best rotors to insert in the device uh, for the final build.